I'm extremely excited to be able to talk to you today um, because I'm very passionate about working with the clients who are uh, working with us as part of the digital marketing transformation program um, to really understand what they can do to move their business forward and to continue to transform and to continue being those market leading advertisers that are re really leading our industries today. Um, as was mentioned, I'm part of the customer experience team at Google. And a lot of the work that we've done around digital transformation focuses in on very tangible technical elements that you can focus on in order to transform a business. Um, but I'd also like to dig into why, why we're doing this and how it actually feels for your customers. Because those performance gains that we heard about from Anna at the beginning, those improvements in revenue and improvements in, in cost are really the outcomes of building a better customer experience. To, to start and to really contextualize what I mean by this, I'd like to share a little bit about one of my passions, and that is coffee. I'm on my third cup today. I'm sure quite a few of you are also passionate about coffee. I know the fika is a big thing in Sweden. I've enjoyed it when I've been there before. Um, but I also wanted to say that um, when I was thinking about some great examples of how customer experiences have evolved over the years and have really transformed the way that we as, as customers experience uh, just a simple thing as purchasing and having a cup of coffee every day. Um, I was really thinking about the first time that I actually remember having a cup of coffee. Uh, what I'm showing you today on the screen is actually um, an image from the little cafe in the small village where I grew up called Yours Truly. Um, and this cafe uh, was a place where my dad would take me uh, for breakfast before I would go to school. And we'd sit in one of those little booths on the left-hand side. And I remember distinctly one of the first times uh, I, my dad looked at me and said, would you like to have a cup of coffee instead of a hot chocolate this morning? And at that point, we had waitresses who would come over, you know, hand you a cup like this. Uh, they might have a pot that was done, but oftentimes they would say, can you wait five or 10 minutes? We have to brew another pot. You know, you'd sit there, they pour the coffee. And the only option you really had was, would you like it black or would you like some milk with that? Um, a little bit of a different experience to what we expect today from um, a lot of the big coffee chains and, and the things that we um, take for granted. Uh, and so I have very fond memories of drinking those early cups of coffee with my dad. Uh, but I thought, actually, what, what that shows is 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when I was having that first cup of coffee, it was a completely different experience to what we experience today and what we expect, right? And what that really shows is that those businesses who really obsess over that experience, the customer experience that the customer has with their brand, um, are really those who are pushing the industry along. And we see this through the BCG research that was talked about earlier, because a lot of what we're talking about when we're talking about moving businesses up that digital maturity curve is really about how you build those ex exceptional customer experiences that then translate into better lifetime value um, and better, better brand experience for your customer. So um, to, to keep going with this coffee metaphor, um, I talked about what this meant to me 25 years ago, which was a nice moment with my dad before school. But what does coffee mean for me today? And I put this little equation up here because to me today, coffee means productivity. I have to have two cups of coffee in the morning. I usually have one before I leave for work. And then I have one while I'm walking to my desk. Um, I take the train in every morning. And so I get the, the 725 into Charing Cross Station. And I have a nice little 15 minute walk to my, my office there in Covent Garden. Uh, and actually, there are quite a few coffee shops on my way to work. So I've, I've shown you the, the four main ones that I pass in my route. But there's one in particular that I go to, which is the one with the green arrow there on the bottom left-hand side. Uh, and the reason I go to that is because of the customer experience that they provide me with. Um, the other three, so they're basically dictating how I should run my morning. And I think this is an important thing to think about when you're talking about how you set up your business and how you make your business helpful and useful for your clients. So the first coffee shop isn't open before 8 a.m. And 
I like to be at my desk at 8 a.m. so I can start taking calls right away. So basically what that, what that store is saying to me is um, you have to be dependent on us to determine what time you're starting your day. You can't start your day at the time you want. The second coffee shop actually doesn't take card payments under 10 pounds. And they are very often sticklers for correct change as well, which is difficult because I don't often carry cash anymore. And then the third one, uh, because it's very popular, very trendy, and they have excellent coffee, um, there is almost always a 10-minute wait. And if I want to be at my desk just before 8 a.m. so I can take my calls in the morning, uh, that means I can't, I would have to actually change the time I get on the train. And because my trains don't only run every 20 minutes, that means I would be adding an additional 30 minutes onto my commute. I would have to go 20 minutes earlier and then wait that extra 10 minutes. So when we think about the experience that they're building for me as a customer, these things are not optimal. Now, the one that I do go to is Starbucks. And to me, Starbucks has created this fantastic customer experience because they, uh, they are open early. So as soon as I get off the train, I know they're going to be open. They've created fantastic digital methods for ordering your coffee. So I can actually log on to their app while I'm on the train and order the coffee that I want. And I know that that coffee is going to be sitting on the coffee bar when I cross the, the train, uh, the, the road to the coffee shop 10 minutes later. And then all I will have to do is go in, pick up my coffee, and I can even pay with mobile payments. So no change, can do it whenever I want. Uh, makes the order really easy. All of this seamlessly fits into my day. So what Starbucks has really done is they've taken my initial equation, which is Jenny's morning equation, coffee equals productivity. And they've actually changed it into a brand experience where I now associate their brand with productivity because they get me my coffee. So um, to me, this is a fantastic example about what the real market leading advertisers are doing to elevate what their brand message is from the simple product that they create to the experience that they're providing their customers. Um, so when we think about some of the findings from the BCG research, uh, one of the key lessons that we learned from looking at advertisers across EMEA, but also globally, was that only 98% of them are really nailing this experience. Um, and so today I wanted to talk about what, what are the challenges that are difficult to overcome for the other 98%? Um, well, if you start thinking about, all of you start picturing in your mind what the best practice example that you've ever seen in your industry um, or it just generally in digital advertising is and, and where your company currently sits, um, start thinking about the elements that you think are the contributing factors to building those amazing experiences. And I'll bet um, that nine out of 10 of you will come up with very technical factors. So things relating to the way that you work with your technology or the way you pull your data together. Uh, so in order to help you um, figure out where to focus all of that attention, uh, I'd like to put together this digital transformation equation. And this really houses together both technical factors, which are things like connected data, data-driven targeting, and automated activation. So all of the elements that help you understand your customer better by pulling in and processing your data, um, figuring out what it is they want, and uh, then turning that into the methods that you can use to target them and then scaling all of that so you can reach thousands and thousands or maybe even millions of customers at one time through your advertising activity, which are, these are the technical factors that are often talked about when you look at the industry press. But the thing that I really wanna draw your attention to is that those technical elements, while key, are amplified even further by better organizational collaboration. And this is something that you can take away from today go back to your organizations and really think about. Because those things, those technical elements on the, the left-hand side of the equation are only as good as the people who are applying them and the way that the organization on your side is set up to deploy them. So what do I mean by that? 
Within the BCG research, what we found is that 98% of brands were so focused on the technical elements of what they were doing, which again, are very important. They weren't focused in on how they actually set up their organizations to successfully deploy those things. So I've put four very specific examples down here, which were found across brands, across verticals, and across geographies. So a lot of brands, so 98% of them, do not create a clear transformation owner in their organization. Um, they don't have plans in place for identifying, recruiting, and also retaining digital talent with the skills that they need to, to make sure they have the foundations to execute those technical elements. Um, they create organizational structures which silo teams by um, specific technical elements and mean that their external partners and the ecosystem of agencies that they work with aren't uh, cross-pollinating. And finally, they rely on traditional partnership models, which aren't necessarily geared at driving the organization's KPIs as a whole. But what we did find was that consistently across the board, the 2% of organizations who were really counted as those multi-moment market-leading organizations were focusing on these types of specific behaviors. So they were doing things like actually making a job role or partial job that said, this is a central digital transformation owner and making it very clear from the C level that this was something that the organization was going to focus attention and resource on. Um, they had clear plans in place to hire and grow specialists, whether that's a data specialist, whether that's an audience specialist, uh, whatever it is that the organization needed in order to make sure that they had the expertise in-house to work um, on their own and also with external partners and agencies to deploy those technical elements in the best way possible. Uh, they were very clear about shared and blended objectives and made sure that teams were not siloed so that they could get the best out of each of the different uh, disciplines within their organization. And finally, they really, really thought about how they created their partner ecosystem and uh, incentivized them through clear digital objectives. And I think these four things you can do regardless of where you sit on that four-step digital maturity spectrum. And I think the reason that you really want to focus in on these is that what BCG found in the research is that those 2% organizations, those multi-moment leaders, um, those people who were doing those four things really saw a multiplier on the costs and revenue impact benefits. So what they found was their CPAs were 1.4 times greater than the average CPA of advertisers who moved up the maturity scale. And the revenue impact was two and a half times greater. I mean, that's huge. So I think the key steps for transformation that I'd love for you to take away from this and to, to think about while you're looking at the rest of the presentations today um, are, number one, make customer experience your company's priority. So when you're thinking about how you're going to deploy uh, your digital transformation strategy, always frame it with how is this going to resonate with my customer? How am I creating an experience through the implementation of these technical elements that will mean that I have somebody who's so willing to advocate for my brand um, that they'll, you know, they'll be making it part of their daily routine and the way that I do with Starbucks every morning. Um, think about the elements that I have outlined in the transformation equation and when you're going through and assessing your digital maturity, um, this can provide a very clear framework for which of those elements you may want to focus on. And finally, make sure that you're investing in those organizational collaboration best practices. Um, I mean, for I know it's hard. Organizational change is hard. But really, as we've seen from the research, that's what the multiplier effect can be on all of those technical elements that you might be doing. And you know, if you're, no matter whether you're just at the beginning of your maturity journey or you've been working on digital transformation for a long time, that's really what's gonna give you the killer edge over your competition. <laughs>